apart from the 1-0 defeat at Motherwell 11 days ago, but five of them were in World Cup duty in midweek. There was joy for Gary Stevens and Terry Butcher of England, and sorrow for Richard Goff, Ali McCoyst and Mo Johnston of Scotland. Chris Woods missed out on England's trip to Poland, but he's back after injury, knowing that Bonnie Ginsburg is putting pressure on him at Ibrox, and he's also determined to ensure he's in Bobby Robson's pool for Italy. Trevor Stephen too will be harbouring World Cup hopes, but he's already found out how tough life is in the Scottish Premier League. Dundee United have used no fewer than 25 players this season in their first team, but Jim McLean has selected exactly the same team as brought off that fine 2-0 win against Aberdeen 10 days ago. Morris Malpass was, for me, one of Scotland's best two players in Paris on Wednesday night, and he's grown in stature in the last couple of years, thriving now on the United captaincy. And Alec Cleland at 18 is one of Scotland's finest prospects. He's playing his 20th game in the first team this afternoon, and just watch for his remarkable poise and control. The referee this afternoon, Mr Jim Renton from Cowden Beef. United start the match in perfect conditions. There's a coolness overhead, the pitch in immaculate condition. And one or two gaps behind Billy Thompson, the United goal, in the crowd. But still a very healthy turnout for what should be one of the most attractive fixtures of the day. United one point ahead of Rangers at this stage in the season after eight matches. United two from the top and Rangers three points behind. Morris Malpass, the United skipper. There's a little word of warning there for Neil Cooper from referee Renton. That first challenge. It's back down with John Clark. Here's Alec Clung. O'Neill. Bowman hugging the right touchline in midfield for United. That's a delicate ball forward. Here's Jackson. Now Gallagher. Away by Stephen. Gallant to Malpass. Krivokovic. Back now with Neri. Headed away by Butcher. And Jim McAnally couldn't get a hold of that shot, but it's been a very promising, sprightly start from United. Here's Wilkins again for Rangers. Walters free on the left. First player to challenge is always Bowman. It's for McCoyst. There's John Clark. A chance now for Rangers to get forward again. Walters will take the throw. He has McCoyst and Johnston available, but he's won the corner kick off Bowman. Goff and Butcher arriving in the box. It was well won by Krivogovic. He left well to get the ball before Goff. Here's Gary Stevens. Johnston has gone wide. There is header. There he again. McCoy is on the side. It turns now for Rangers. Defending by John Clark, who kept his head in that emergency situation. Well, an indecisive clearance there by Neri, returned immediately by Cooper. McCoy was onside, got the ball ahead of Billy Thompson, but Clark was there to clear. Right with Trevor Stephen. Robbed easily by Jackson. O'Neill is inside. Jackson continues the run, showing good pace there, getting away from Stevens. Now showing control, but he didn't have quite enough space. Press the start of the match, though, from Darren Jackson, the former Meadowbank and Newcastle United player. Butcher into midfield, picking out Walters. There's McCoyst. All across by Clark. That's through the middle for Stephen. Great play from Rangers! Stephen showing superb control with the right foot, but not quite the required accuracy with the left. Mark 
Hawks. Long ball goes straight to Monroe. Here's Walters. Good running by Monroe. He's followed all the way by Bowman. An excellent play by both players. Stuart Monroe for his charging run in the left and Dave Bowman for his defensive diligence. Never Steven taking all the Rangers corner kicks. Once again, a difficult ball for Billy Thompson. Ivanovic heads out, there's Stevens. Well, I'm not sure Billy Thompson knew a great deal about that. Far flung corner kick this time, headed away well by Krivakovic. Coming on the volley to Gary Stevens through that ruck of players and relief for Billy Thompson. A real rock by Stevens. Back with Goff. Of course, has found a yard around the box. It's Trevor Stephen, now Johnston. Stephen! Blocked by John Clark. And suddenly, United are under siege. The long ball caused a problem. McCoy's found some space for a moment. Stephen tried to knock that down for Johnston. A good tackle by Neri. It fell for Trevor Stephen, and there was John Clark with the pins. Cooper, a header on the turn by Ali McCoy. He took a severe blow there in the process. A head knock there for McCoy, and Terry Butcher signalling urgently to the dugout for attention. It was helped on there and returned quickly by Neil Cooper. Look at the courage here of Ali McCoy going for this and taking that defender's head in the face in the process. Well, Ali McCoy. Looking none too happy. A blow on the temple. Well, that's been carefully examined by Phil Bosma, and in fact, he is taking no chances. McCoy is coming off. Certainly looks groggy. Here's Butcher. Johnston playing for the moment through the middle on his own for Rangers with McCoy off the field. Careless one from Clellans and from Gary Stevens. Here's Kevin Gallagher. Well, a delightful chip there from Gallagher. He saw Woods off his line. Uh, that ball going over the bar, I'm sure, would relieve both Chris Woods and Gary Stevens, who made the defensive error. Welcome back for Ali McCoyst. He's been cleared to return to the action. Bowman <laughs> and Cooper in a very hefty exchange. Cooper is on the ground and there was no free kick there. Both players going for the ball in strong, determined fashion. Neil Cooper coming off second best. The referee will not allow the play to stop. He's insisting. No, he's not allowing attention for Cooper. The high ball there. Cooper coming to try to play it. Bowman also going for the ball. There was the collision. Well, certainly Bowman was high. Well, Neil Cooper will certainly not have relished that one little bit. Not too often on the receiving end. <laughs> Stevens lost it forward. And away by Clark. Bowman into space, Wilkins got there first. And there goes the half-time whistle. Fully four minutes extra played in the first half to allow the injuries to Ali McCoyst and Neil Cooper. And it was McCoyst who came closest, 
to opening the scoring in the first half. There he goes off with the wounds of the first half, but he had a great chance when Neil Cooper beat the offside trap after the corner kick, played it into his path and in the inside left channel. He beat Billy Thompson to the ball, but John Clark made the clearance in the goal mouth. So the half-time score here at Ibrox, Rangers nil, Dundee United one. So the sun is beginning to disappear here at Ibrox as Rangers get the second half underway and they've made a very significant change at half-time. Ian McCall, wearing number 14, has come on in midfield to replace Neil Cooper, who took that heavy face knock late in the first half. McCoy running it back for Wilkins. And Stephen, and Butcher. Johnson's layoff is Wilkins. And McCall. Harper's ball looking for Walters. Blocked there by Billy Thompson, Johnson's in among it. It scrambled over the line, has it gone? Yes! The goal has been given. Well, what a scene inside the United goal mouth. Smile on the face of Ali McCoy. The linesman has indicated it's a goal. All sorts of problems coming from this ball in from Ian McCall. Walters with his head to it. Thompson blocked it, then tried to kick it away. Couldn't get the ball clear. No Johnston was there. It broke from Johnston across towards McCoy's, and it looked as though no Johnston got the final touch. So no Johnston coming to the touchline to speak to Phil Borsma, the Rangers trainer. But there's going to be a problem for one of the United players who protested to the linesman too vehemently about that. And indeed it was the United captain Morris Malpass who said too much to the near side linesman. United. Ball stopped this time by Jackson. Here's Gallagher. Space on the right for Bowman and Cleland. Cleland with a cross. That'll be a corner kick to United. So perhaps now some work for Chris Woods to do. Clark trying to ensure that. A packed penalty area for Darren Jackson's corner. And no nods it out. Walters completes the clearance. David Neary shielding his eyes from the sun. Still doing the same as he looks up and finds Gallagher. Here's O'Neill. Bowman. Now McAnally. Krivogovic. Stumble at the wrong moment for United. Giving Stevens possession. He looks for support inside, gets it from Johnston. Couldn't get over the shot as John Clark made his challenge. Intelligent play though from Ali McCoyst. A look here at the way McCoyst beats the offside trap, a long high ball played forward. And McCoyst coming to an onside position, breaking on the right, looking for Johnston inside. Call. There's Johnston! It's off the face of the post. Walter returns it again. There's David Neary with the headed clearance. Oh, Morris Johnson coming close to the Rangers 
second. And once again, it was all created by Ian McCall with a fine slanting cross. Johnston leading in, Thompson was beaten, it came off the post. McCall with a corner kick. Thompson, Garlow's at the second attempt. So what can United do about this now? They started in such promising fashion, but at the moment they look as though they've lost their way somewhat. Wilkins finding the call. Good judgment there by Malpass. Linking with McAnally. It's a good move from United. Here's Krivogovic. And a bit of a handball. It came off. Schumann goes on. Yes. The penalty kick has been given. Schumann now protesting towards the referee. This is a fine move from United. Inspired by Malpass. As the ball is played in here by Krivogovic. It certainly appeared to hit the left arm of Stuart Munro, and the referee looks at the linesman and gives the penalty. So it is a perfect opportunity for Andy United to equalise. The task has been entrusted to Michael O'Neill. Northern Ireland International facing Chris Woods. One each. Only just from Michael O'Neill. But he certainly enjoyed that. He's the leading goal scorer at Tannadice this season now. That's his fourth goal. And it just cracked in off the underside of the crossbar. There it is, hitting the roof of the net on the bounce. Walters. That goes nearly with Johnston. Here's Darren Jackson. Good turn. He's shown a lot of ability too this afternoon, Darren Jackson. Quarter of an hour remaining. United clearly were much happier with a point than Rangers. And they see a big push towards the end from the home side. There goes Butcher. Headed up by Neri. to find the head of Neri, but this is Walters. Go to McCoist. Sheer brilliance from McCoist. Rangers take the lead. It was created here by Mark Walters. Now just wait for this delightful pass. No question of offside, I'm sure, when the ball was released. McGuinness played McCoist on. The finishing was deadly. Well, McCoy gets his ninth goal of the season and seldom is a goal more welcome, I'm sure. McCoy looking for Johnston. Well tackled again by Clark. Close to Wilkins. Here's Johnston. It's a good second half performance this from Rangers. Here's Walters. And it goes to Wilkins. Now Stephen. Walters again. Fine out swinging cross. There's Ian McCall. And it came off McGuinness. That'll be a corner kick. Feels to handball from the Rangers players, but if there was handball, definitely a judge to be accidental by the referee. There was the header, it came off the arm, perhaps, of Gary McGuinness, involuntarily. A corner kick, it is. Goff has gone forward. So has Butcher to the near post, as usual. Headed out by Clark, there's Jackson. Pass. Williams finds Walters. Well, didn't quite make it. McGuinness was there. Now here's Johnston.
And here post ball for McCoist. Good positioning there from Billy Thompson. That should made all the difference. A good play here from Johnston. Bringing the ball to his left foot, playing in the cross. Touched on by McCoist. And well saved by Thompson. Jackson, Michael Lennon. Well, he just took a blow on the head there from well pass, and Johnston is onside. McCoyst waits in the middle. Released early, and it's McCoyst taken out of the play by McGuinness off the ball. Play continuing as Ian McCall fails to keep it in on the far side. And McCoyst going across the referee, Renton. Johnston playing it in, McGuinness and McCoy's clash at the edge of the box. McCoy's clearly thought he was taken out of the play. Well, the referee saw nothing to miss. Here's Kivorovic. The tackle came from Johnston. Kivorovic again. The Rangers fans whistling for a time up. Here's McAnally. Kivorovic couldn't collect the pass. It might now be all over for Dundee United. Well pass inside, helped on by Neri. Here's Bowman. McAnally gives chase. There's Kivorovic. Up goes Goff. Kivorovic again. Out Patalainen. United enjoying some possession. There's a good cross inside. Up goes Butcher. And the full-time whistle has gone. Has been noticed by the players, all the fans. Rangers have won by two goals to one. It's a victory they can scarcely begrudge. The opening goal in controversial circumstances from Johnston, but the winner from Ali McCoyst had no doubt at all about it. There's a very warm exchange between the two international teammates, McCoyst and Malpass. Kevin Gallagher also joining the discussion. But it was McCoyst who won the match in the end for Rangers with that superb strike in 75 minutes. The Rangers. Suddenly deserve a victory. They won in the end. It was Rangers 2 and the United 1. Yeah, what was your reaction to that performance? I thought today, Jock, we were, were excellent. I thought we played some very, very good football. Um, that was a good deal round for us. Happy with today. And of course, you got your strike force back in business. Yeah, certainly did. They, they played well. Apart from the goals, they, they played very well. Um, but I'm sure they'd be the first to say that it wasn't just about them, too, because it was a good team performance. In my experience, after a midweek game, whether it be an international or playing in Europe, you get some sort of um, hangover. And we were worried about that today because we had so many people away in midweek duty. But there was not a hint to that. Um, a really good team performance today. Without, well, there's several individuals I could pick out, but it'd be wrong for me because I felt today it was a good, solid team performance, especially with the sort of run we've been having where we haven't been getting a lot of luck. Um, none of them felt sorry for themselves and they showed what they were made of today. If I could pick out one individual who made mm -hmm. some impact, was Ian McCall who came on in the second half yeah. and injected some freshness. Were you pleased with him? You're right. Today he came on and um, he inspired us, changed the game again. We were, we were bossing the game at that time. But, um, when he came on, he, he, he got them on their heels a couple of times down the line and played a couple of lovely goals. And I want especially I can, I can think of when Morris was unfortunate with the ball from his head or hit the bottom of the post. Now, you had a good performance, but Aberdeen struggled, obviously, against that counts, Hearts. That, that counts the League Cup final. Counts for nothing. Um, next Sunday, I'm hoping it'll be another classic because we've played them twice in this final the last two years. There have been two, two very, very good games, close encounters, and I'm sure next Sunday, um, regardless of what happened today at Petaudry, next Sunday will be a very tight and close game. Well,